I started my YouTube account back in 2008, but without too much success. I used YouTube not really to make money, but to embed videos on my website, Economics Help. But in 2021, I realized a lot of the old videos needed replacing with better quality ones. And in August of 2022, I finally, after 15 years, got 1000 subscribers. And when I was finally monetized on YouTube, I took up the challenge of producing videos for YouTube particularly. It's been an interesting journey working out what works and what doesn't. I remember watching a video where Mr. Beast says, first make 100 videos and then let's talk about how to grow your channel. And that to some extent has been my experience. Some videos have been successful and earned a decent income, but most videos have not. Sometimes I felt I had cracked YouTube only to find it's actually a lot harder than I thought or would like. In this video, I'll tell you how much I earned, the net profit, the hourly rate, and also what I've learned from YouTube to hopefully save you time. Because after been through the process, I really think it is better to try to learn how to make videos in your first 10 rather than your first 100. Firstly, how much do individual videos make? Well, it varies considerably. I made a good video on the US economy, but it had a click through rate of 2%. YouTube stopped showing the video. It gained 600 views and earned a dollar. An hourly rate of a few cents. YouTube has pigeonholed the channel as UK based and it's hard to break out of that. Videos that do well tend to be about economic crisis. Now don't take this the wrong way, but you could say the current perilous state of the UK economy has made my job a little easier. There's certainly always something to talk about. This video on the self-destruction of the UK economy back in September got 50,000 views, mostly in the first three days. It gained 600 subscribers and earned $173. However, I got fed up making videos about economic crisis. So I tried to make a video about positive economic news you don't really hear about. It got 1,600 views with a click-through rate of 4%. It didn't get very far. $9 for 15 hours work is a poor return. It would be hard to make a living on YouTube talking about positive economic news, especially when you live in Brexit Britain. The most successful video was one on UK house prices, 400,000 views, $1,600. The key was the initial 24 hours. It was getting a click-through rate of 12%. People liked it, so YouTube showed it to a huge new audience beyond my usual subscriber base. The final click-through rate was 4%, but that was because YouTube was showing to a very large audience. Just a few weeks before, I did a video about the UK economy since 1952. I thought there would be a lot of interest because of the death of Queen Elizabeth. I was wrong. It did very badly with a click-through rate of 2%. As you can see, it has a pretty useless thumbnail and title. And that brings me to my first YouTube tip. On YouTube, you have to be good at everything. I would say that your video is as good as your weakest link. Having a brilliant video is no good if you cobble together a useless thumbnail. Generally, I can know how well a video will do by the click-through rate of the first 12 hours. Everything else is secondary, though I should say all videos are of a broadly similar standard. I will give more tips on YouTube at the end, but now more on income. This is monthly income since I first got 1,000 subscribers in August. The first month August was $91, and this quickly grew to $1,900, which got me quite excited. But then it fell back in December and January, as I realized it was harder than I hoped. So it is roughly $4,000 in the past six months. But there are two caveats. Firstly, is it actually worth it? What is the hourly rate for this kind of income? On average, I'm spending 10 to 15 hours to make a video, perhaps more. The time has been similar whether the video gains 500 views or 50,000. Time includes research, writing, scripts, making graphs, 
shooting the video, editing, making thumbnails. And it might even be longer if you include other time spent on organization, learning how to do things and planning. Put it this way, if I had a full-time nine to five teaching job, there is no way I could do this YouTube channel. Since monetization on the 1st of August, I have made 55 videos and earned just under $4,000, gained 9,000 subscribers with 1.2 million views. That is an average of $71 per video, but it took very roughly 1,000 total hours, which is an hourly rate of $4.70. And by happy coincidence, that is just slightly higher than the same rate I got working as a waiter at my first job at the Little Chef Diner back in 1993. To put it into context, I recently called out my local plumber and he charged £95, $120 an hour. So if there are any kids wondering which university to go to, I would seriously consider ignoring the advice of parents and teachers. Don't become an economist, become a plumber, you will learn more. Also, there is another difference. Of this first $4,000, I've invested around 2500 It includes equipment such as the HyperX microphone, which I later decided wasn't good enough, and so went for the Shure M7B with Cloudlifter. This also doesn't include semi-necessary subscriptions to the FT, The Economist, Adobe, easily $100 a month. I had semi-viral videos with poor lighting and average audio. I'm sure if I'd spent money earlier, it would have been easily been paid back. So far, the net profit is around $1,400, which works out at a paltry $1.33 per hour. But of course, this hourly pay rate is not that meaningful. The first 130 videos have been more like an apprenticeship. If you break even after the first six months of YouTube, it's probably a very good start. Going forward, I ought to be less tight about buying lighting, but the Yorkshireman in me always wants to scrimp and save. At least the audio equipment won't need upgrading. By the way, very early videos, I got comments like this. This is the kind of comment you definitely need to respond to. Secondly, one of the attractions of YouTube is potential growth in the future. It took 15 years to get 1,000 subscribers. Admittedly, I wasn't trying very hard but then six months to get another 9,000. If you look at the graph of subscribers, it is on a clear upward trend. And, of, and although I think subscribers are generally overrated as a goal, it can't hurt to have more. I used to make a living just from the website economicshelp.org, but growth on the website has stalled. And in the long term, who knows what AI and chat GBT will do to the traditional website model. YouTube is a way to diversify my income away from just relying on one website. My primary goal is to make sure I never have to get a proper job like being a teacher, which I used to do very hard work. I admire teachers a lot, but I don't mind a low hourly pay if you can work for yourself doing content that's very creative and that you really love doing. So what have I learned from my YouTube experience? Well, I would go so far as to say the wrong kind of subscriber is unhelpful. You don't want subscribers who never click on a video and reduce your click-through rate. So if you're interested in the UK economy, please do subscribe. But if you're interested in how to succeed on YouTube, I wouldn't advise it because I will make very few videos like this in the future. In the initial phase, I made a lot of videos which were a complete flop. I spent the same hourly time on making them, but, but YouTube basically kills them off after 24 hours. And looking back, I was really quite a slow learner. Also, the first 10 seconds of a video is critical and often I've been quite weak. I struggled with the first 10 seconds of video. I have a big drop off initially, but then good retention for the rest of the video. I don't watch too many videos on how to succeed at YouTube, but I have seen a few by Nate at Channel Makers. I like his good high octane energy at the start and I need to work on that. And also, if you want to have a good laugh, have a look at my first video I made in 2008. Please don't leave, I won't talk to you for too long. Hello, um, in this video, I'd like to talk about... Uh... But it's interesting to see how different YouTube was back in 2008. 
There is part of me that is not entirely comfortable with a YouTube model, which rewards dramatic clickbait titles. I always prefer a calm, measured, non-partisan response. And this approach isn't entirely suited to YouTube. But unless you're willing to play the game, so to speak, there's no point. I was too slow to learn how to create good thumbnails and good titles. Usually after spending 12 hours of making a great video, I wanted to rush through a thumbnail so I could finish. I'm not very good at viewing other videos in my niche. I prefer to avoid any influence, but I do like the videos of TLDR and I learned quite a few tips from both film booth and channel makers. What should I do next? I have been making two videos a week, but I am toying with the idea of making just one, but spending 20 hours rather than 15. The logic is that making one video would save me a bit of time, but also force me to make sure everything is super excellent and not rush it through to finish. The money in YouTube is all about being at the far end of a quality spectrum. Aim to be the best, not just better than average. One thing is certain, I will never make videos with a click-through rate of 2% again. There's no point. Hope you found this useful. If you do, give it a thumbs up and good luck with your YouTube uh, channel.